The potential of solar power to offer clean green energy has been seen as the possible saviour for our climate change sins. The UK government has set a target that by 2020, wind, wave and solar power will be providing up to 15% of our energy. But there's a common misconception that it's unreliable, expensive and cumbersome. At Imperial College London, researchers are working very hard to try to change all of that. Toby Firenze is the pioneer in the study of solar energy, and the college is bidding to become a world leader in this field. Hi, Toby. Hello. Um, just tell me to begin with, what research are you doing, Toby, to make um, solar panel use more accessible? Well, our, our research is unique because we're actually looking at a different type of se uh, semiconducting material. We don't use silicon. And the material we use, in fact, is actually a special type of plastic. And the advantage of, of this plastic is, uh, firstly, plastics can be made very cheaply on a large scale. But uh, the key is that this plastic is soluble. So you can dissolve the plastic into a, into a liquid, a special type of electronic ink. And this ink can be then uh, printed over large areas. Uh, and that gives us the opportunity to make solar energy much more affordable. The radiation which falls on buildings in the UK is seven times greater than the electricity used inside them. Covering just a fraction of buildings in reasonably efficient solar cells would totally remove the need for conventional energy sources. Thanks. So, just tell me a bit about this room. Yes, Toby. okay, so uh, this machine is called a glove box and the purpose of the machine is um, to protects the materials from uh, oxygen and water vapour, so which are in the atmosphere. So this, uh, this, this box is filled uh, with nitrogen okay. and there is very, very, very little oxygen and water in there. It's a very dry atmosphere. Okay. And because one of the, the disadvantages is, is of our materials is that they are quite sensitive to oxygen and water. So when we're in the process of making the solar panels, we need to make sure uh, they're not exposed to, to right. oxygen and water. Okay. So Toby, this is the final part of the process, basically. Uh, yes, absolutely. So we place one of our finished solar panels in the testing chamber, uh, and we connect it up to the computer. Uh, and what we want to do to see how good our uh, solar panel really is, is put it in front of a, a standardized lamp called a solar simulator. And this allows us to compare our solar panels with uh, those produced by other researchers in the community. So we've, we've placed our solar panel in, in the path of the light uh, and opened the shutter. And you can see we have quite a bright light source. It's very bright, isn't it? And now we can measure the, the, the response of the, of the solar cell using the computer. Uh, so this is a, uh, a final demonstrating solar panel. Uh, and. It's, at the moment, you can see it's spinning uh, a small motor, so spinning this yellow disc. Uh, and you can see it working by the fact oh, that when, stops, I, when I cover it up, it, it stops. So that's, a, that's just a, a solar panel in action. That's, that's quite amazing because it's, you know, it's not that sunny, so yeah, let's be honest. No, there's no direct sunlight, yeah, so it's only, it's only picking up the diffuse sunlight. So. But it, it shows that there is quite Does a bit of light around. Yes. So, so do you think that this could make solar power viable in the future, as a future technology in a sense? Uh, well, I mean, obviously not that, not that size, but... <laughs> yeah. No, well, I mean, I think, firstly, solar energy is already viable, and we're starting to see a rapid expansion of the amount of solar energy that's out there. But with this particular printed solar panels, I think there is the potential to uh, create a dramatic reduction in the, in the cost of solar panels. So how many years do you reckon it will be on a practical level before we see buildings covered in solar panels or whatever? I mean, you know, realistically, where are we looking towards here? Uh, well, I think uh, it's, it's a very uh, good question and it's difficult to answer. Uh, I think there is already uh, a large movement and in certain countries like Germany and Japan and some parts of California, there is already an explosion of uh, solar energy technology. Um, but uh, certainly there's, there's a lot of room to, to go and it depends on new technologies bringing the cost down 
and governments making uh, making it advantageous for consumers to, to use solar panels. So by give, for example, by giving subsidies or by um, keeping the taxation uh, of other technologies such as burning fossil fuels um, much higher to give a boost to, to solar. Using solar power to supply a million homes with energy would reduce CO2 emissions by 4.3 million tonnes every year. That's the equivalent of removing 850,000 cars from the roads. Whilst we still have light years to travel before we can ban fossil fuels, these developments in solar technology are certainly giving us a clear direction.